Good afternoon and welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, but um, I've been looking for some great new people to talk to. And um, I have finally got a chance to speak to someone I've been hoping to for a while. Uh, he's one of my favourite Australian uh, YA and queer YA um, authors. And he joins me today to talk about his new book. His name is Will Kostakis. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Michael. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, it's a great achievement to have one book published or maybe two books and if you get to a third like that's pretty good you've just brought dropped book number eight I'll hold it up there um <laughs> we could be something that's got to feel like a bit of an accomplishment to be on to your eighth book yeah look it is but you've also got to remember it like it took all the other books to get to this point like i'm really really proud of this one but you know if i go back and read that first one i'm like oh maybe we shouldn't have published that one so you know it's it sounds like a big number and i'm cheating as well a couple of those are shorter novellas and books for younger readers so this is my sixth proper novel yeah a book's a book and a publishment is a is a publishment so there you go <laughs> <laughs> um now you started at the the right young age of 19 yeah as uh, getting published that must have been a, a feeling and a half Oh, yeah. And look, I was, look, if you are writing a novel in high school, you are the, you're not the most well-adjusted, down-to-earth person. So you can imagine that that is not the kind of person you want to give a publishing deal at 17 and throw them on the sort of speaking circuit at 19. Like I was, I was really surprised my neck didn't snap, my head grew so much, but it was a hobbling experience. Um, it went on to sell a whopping 10 copies, including the seven I bought myself. So, you know, uh, massive bestseller. Um, but yeah, it is like when I think back at it, I was way too young for it. And whenever I see a publisher kind of signing a teenager or a child, I'm like, oh, my God, stop it. Like there is no sort of there are no structures in there to support children and teenagers through this process. Um, but on the flip side, I am the author I am today because I went through it so young and was sort of chewed up and spat out by the machinations of publishing. Um, and I had to really decide whether this was where I wanted to be for the rest of my life. I'm still not quite sure it is where I want to be, um, but I'm still having fun and I'm writing things that hopefully connect to people as much as they sort of speak to me. Indeed. And now you, here you are professionally writing, um, speaking and touring. Like it's, you're living the life. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of you being so young and writing and your new book, We Could Be Something, um, I'm about halfway through. I'd only got it the other day and I've been powering through and loving it. And I'm loving hearing the resonation of your story versus the story that we're picking up with the characters here. Mm -hmm. um, more so too, I'm loving, you know, we've gone from uh, into a full like double generational queer story as well, which is yeah. fascinating. Um, yeah. So We Could Be Something is not only exploring the life of a, um, a young current um queer teenager um but also his gay parents um and their struggles splitting up and that backstory of his dad being an author there's a lot to unpack here and there's obviously some things that are you know part memoir and i read that you've also started to mm -hmm. embellish that talk me through how you managed to blend those worlds together <laughs> well basically so the book did start there were two separate novels there was one story i wanted to write sort of about growing up in a small but potent greek family and um, another story that I wanted to write that was about my experiences as a teenager um, being an author. And those two ideas were kind of in conflict until I realized, oh wait, I can merge them. <laughs> um, and so what ended up uniting both of those was looking at how much, um, not so much queerness has changed, but the way that society deals with it and explores it. Like I've been in publishing for 15 years now where, you know, when I first came out, I was straight author, Will Kostakis. And then I was the straight author who, you know, dared to write one queer character. But if we wrote that gay character and he lost his virginity, as he did in the first third, I had to age him up to 18 because God forbid, you know, a 17 year old gay kid was sexually active. And that meant aging up all of the characters in the story and changing the shape of it. And it was also, there was a directive from the publisher. It was like, well, you know, he can't have anonymous sex with more than one person. And then that has to, um, 
result in a relationship. And so it was very much like, oh, this is not the experience, but okay, we'll do it. That's fine. Um, and then when I came out, when I released the book after that, The Sidekicks, which was my sort of, there was a character in there that was struggling to come out as I was. Um, and then I was politely, but not really, told that I could no longer speak at Catholic schools because it was no longer appropriate, you know, for me to be a gay guy teaching creative writing because God forbid I would be the first. <laughs> um, wow. Wow. And then, That's and that uh, was, intense. That was, that was 2016. And then there has been this huge shift ever since where now publishing is like, make it gayer, make it gayer. And there's this whiplash of, okay, I remember what it was like before and now I'm seeing what it is now. And I feel sort of all of my sort of, the structure and the the foundations that I've built in publishing were from that era of, oh, if you write a queer book, it's probably not going to get into schools. And that's where most books are sold for teenagers. And whereas now it's like, quick, make the boys kiss, but it also has to be palatable to largely female romance readers. So it can't be too realistic to the queer experience they just have to be cute boys who stare longingly at each other for 200 pages and then maybe kiss at the end um and so I wanted to look at you know I have a foot in those two worlds the past and sort of this experience that we have now where you know I'm visiting schools and you'll have 20 30 40 percent of the kids in the audience identifying as queer and that is fantastic. And it's so great to see, but it's such a far cry from my queer experience. And honestly, the queer experience that publishing loves, which is, you know, if you're reading a book about queer teenagers, you're expecting one or two of them to die by suicide by the end, because it's, you know, that's the, that's the lived experience. And it's like, we still haven't shaken off our baggage from struggling to come out into the early 2000s, the 90s, the 80s. And we're putting that on kids in the twenties. And that's not really what the queer experience is now. It is for some people and that's shit and we have to fight for them. But largely we are in a more accepting Australia that really doesn't give a shit what other people do. Um, and so I wanted to contrast the coming out story that publishing is more okay with somebody who is struggling and is learning to come to terms with their life. And that's always where it ends. Like, somebody comes out and then they accept that that is who they are. And then they never get a story after that, um, which is such a, it's such a boring stale place for a story because, you know, once we realize who we are, that's when the world opens up to us as queer people. But that is where our stories always end. Where it's like, oh, you have discovered you are human and maybe, you know, your dad doesn't beat you anymore. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> and it's just, and that's it. And it's like, oh, that's, that's not a story. That's like, that is the first three pages. Like, give me something else. And so, so Thiri is sort of in that older world of sort of exploring his sexuality. Whereas his son, Harvey, is more like, yep, I'm Pan, I'll... I'll screw anything that moves. I just want to have, you know, you know, love without labels, without those sort of hangups, which is more that sort of Gen Z vibe um, that we're seeing. And I wanted to play them off each other. Yeah. And it's uh, absolutely right. I like, like, love that the book lands with the closet door wide open. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a great place that it takes off. And you're like, oh, he's queer. Oh, he's queer as well. And um, it's a, it's a great that modern explosion. Exactly what you were saying as well. Like um, this paradigm shift from telling the sad gay stories into mm -hmm. exploring what our new gay stories are, but also respecting the past as well. And that's yeah. what this does a really really interesting job of doing. We're exploring what his dad went through versus what he does um, today is uh, a really fascinating story. Uh, if you haven't read it yet, please make sure you get along and find we could be something. Um, now, speaking of these stories, I suppose, um, is this the direction that you want to keep going? Because we've seen, you know, your queer characters and then it's it's like this evolution of you versus your books as well. Are we going yeah. to see more, you know, gay, 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 gay books as we uh, can in the future from you? Well, it's like I spent the first 10 years of my career not being allowed to write books that I thought spoke to my lived experience. Um, 
And so that's obviously really freeing, but at the same time, we are seeing sort of the book bannings in the US. And so that is affecting how American publishers are acquiring books. Um, and the big problem with that is in Australia, it is very rare to make a living out of being a writer and just working within this territory. In Australia, even though we don't have political school boards, we have the one very loud parent at a school that will, you know, approach a librarian and say, how dare you put this queer book in senior fiction? You know, it should not be shelved at all. And so you have librarians who are already, you know, censoring, you know, straight out of the gate by putting any queer story into senior fiction. So that's year 9, 10, 11, 12. And then when it's spotted there by a parent who think their child will read one queer story and suddenly, you know, sink to their knees. Um those books are then getting shifted from there. And we, we're not really having the conversation here where it's like, okay, actually we need to speak up for all the teenagers that really, really enjoy, you know, those queer stories. And we're seeing most of the stories that kids are engaging with are queer. And we're sort of in a scenario now where especially post COVID sort of reading levels are down, literacy rates are down, enthusiasm for books is way down. Um, and, you know, queer storytelling, it is the different kinds of stories that kids weren't seeing on the shelves. They're not reading in class, um, mostly because we weren't showing them, not that those stories didn't exist. Um, and so, well, yes, long-winded way to answer your question. I really want to sort of stay in this lane, keep exploring queerness as it shifts and as it changes. I'm sure this is not the last iteration of it that we will see. Um, I'm also wary of the fact that I probably need to write my generic straight boy in the countryside, you know, is aspiring to be an author and then a white girl dies and he has to help solve the murder while also confronting the racism that his friend feels <laughs> and is subjected to and then sort of write that generic story that is more pal palatable to the wider Australian audience. Plenty of ideas in the mix there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But certainly very important as well. Um, yeah. And you're absolutely right about, you know, seeing our queer voices reflected in, in um, much more literature in the future. And hopefully no book bannings in Australia, please. That would yeah. be wonderful. <laughs> um, well, well, thank you very much for joining me. I don't want to hold you up for too long because I'm sure you have more schools, schools to tour and more books to get writing. But thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, and as I said before, if you haven't yet, Will's book is We Could Be Something. Got a little look for you there. Um, make sure you head along, find it in all good bookstores around the country. Tell your friends and get reading. Until next time, thank you very much for joining me, Will. Thanks very much, Michael. It was a pleasure.